Hello, and welcome back to SciTi Tech. In this video, I want to do an experiment with using a piezo and seeing if I can be able to make a small device that could be able to play really loud audio, like taking the piezo and putting it onto a paper cup to make a really loud speaker. Let's get started. And these are the items you're going to need to make for this project. The items you're going to need a 220 ohm resistor, a 22 microfarad electrolytic capacitor, an 8 pin IC socket holder, an LM386 audio amplifier, a 1000 microfarad electrolytic capacitor, and a piezo. And this right here is the schematic that you need to follow to make this circuit. Now let's go and assemble this project and let's get started. First you're going to need to take your IC socket holder and place it in the center of the perf board. Solder one pin into place. Hold the IC socket holder flat and then remelt the solder. That way everything is flush to the board. And now solder the rest of the pins into place. And it should look just like that. Next you're going to need to take your 220 ohm resistor and place it onto pin 2 and 3. Bend the leads over, solder bridge it together, cut off the leads, and it should look just like this. Next you're going to need to take your 22 microfarad electrolytic capacitor, where this side is a negative and this side is positive. What you need to do is connect the negative to pin 4 and the positive to pin 3. Just like that, push it in and bend it over. Bend over the leads so you can solder bridge them together. Just like that. Cut off the leads and it should look just like this. Next, take your 1000 microfarad electrolytic capacitor and connect the negative to pin 5. Bend the leads over, solder it into place, and then solder bridge it together. Next, you're going to need to take your negative wire, solder it to pin 2 and then solder it to pin 4. Take your 9 volt battery connector, connect the positive to pin 6, solder bridge it to 6. Take the negative of the battery clip and connect it to pin 4. Solder it into place. Now take your audio jack, and the green is negative, and the red is positive. Solder the green negative to pin 2, and then solder the red positive to pin 3. Next take your LM386 microcontroller and place it into its socket. And there you have it, the circuit is almost complete. Solder the blue to the negative, which is pin 4. Then solder the green wire to the positive of the 1000 microfarad electrolytic capacitor. And there, most of the circuit is now complete. Next, what I need to do is attach the piezo to it. Simply take the piezo and solder the wires to it. Polarity in this situation doesn't matter. Solder the first wire into place. And I'll solder the second wire. And there, the circuit is now complete. Let's go ahead and test it out. Simply take the audio jack, plug it into my phone, and I'll take a 9 volt battery and power the circuit. And now, let's go ahead and have a listen. Oh, I see, there's a problem. The wire's not soldered in properly. Okay, 
Okay, so now let's have a listen. It's very weak. Very, very weak. So I'm going to have to try something else. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and remove the plastic piece that is on there and see if I can be able to use something else to amplify the sound. And I'm going to see if this cup can amplify the sound a little bit better by simply taking it and placing it onto the cup. Now let's try again. Okay, so it doesn't sound very loud using it on the cup, and I also tested it by touching it directly to the metal and touching it directly to something hollow like this. It kind of works a little better, but not much. So what I'm gonna try to do is replace it with another piezo and maybe it'll work better. This one's a little smaller, so I'm kind of concerned that maybe it'll work less. I'm not really sure and I wanna give it a try and see what I can do. Because I really like this idea and I really want it to work. If it doesn't work, then I can probably just use these piezos as a sensor or a vibration sensor. My whole idea and the purpose of this video is to turn something like this into a little induction speaker, which I made in a previous video, because when this vibrates, it causes, when the speaker vibrates, it causes this pin to vibrate, which then generates sound on surfaces. So I thought it would do the same thing with something like this because it's basically built the same way. So I assumed that this was going to work the same as this. So what I'm going to do is try another piezo that came from a microwave because it may work on a surface like this by causing the vibration to vibrate through a surface that's hollow and it creates some kind of resonance frequency within the object, but it's not very powerful. So something like this that has already a little chamber to allow sound to come out would obviously be built for something like that. You know how loud a microwave can be when it beeps. So let's just see how this sounds. And I'll solder the wires into place. Yes, definitely as predicted. Yeah, it's still not very powerful. Okay, so as you can see, for example, this. I know will definitely work. So now let's go ahead and plug it back in. Now, let's go try it out and you'll see what I mean. So obviously, as you can see, piezos aren't really good for this particular project idea. I thought I could just take a simple piezo and just have it connect to a surface just like this, like that, and then there, making something much smaller and thinner to be able to play the sound. You now basically attaching it to a cup. As you can see how small and compact that is, and you can just play music all from a little cup, or using it for other stuff on our other types of surfaces that's very compact, even making this circuit much smaller, which would make it more practical but it turns out using a piezo doesn't seem to have enough power to be able to produce enough sound that is, well, that is too audible. You can still hear it, but it's very faint. So using a speaker like this, with this type of setup, works. So, yeah, unfortunately, using a piezo is not a good idea for this project. So like I said earlier, I'll just simply take the piezo and then stick with the idea of using it as some kind of a sensor or a trigger switch by placing it on like say a door, for example, and someone knocks on the door, it'll sense the vibration and maybe sound an alarm or turn on an LED or maybe send a notification to my phone. 
something like that. Or maybe even putting it on the window if someone's trying to break in, it'll sense, uh, sense the window being tapped on, or even placing it during a, in a hallway or a floor or on a stairway or any kind of surface where someone is just simply walking by and it senses the vibration. Lots of different ideas that I can do for this as being a sensor, so perhaps I'll try that in a future video instead. And there you have it. Now you know that using a piezo doesn't work for this type of project idea. Thank you for watching SciTitech. I hope you learned something new. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and of course click on the bell icon to be notified of future SciTitech videos. Till the next tech, goodbye.